instantly. If you miss one package of milk, jail instantly. Ten years. <laughs> okay, maybe not the best tip, but uh, three boxes within the box. Alright, there we go. Where are we and why are we here? We are at City Gross, and yeah, that sounds gross, but that's that's another, that means another thing in Swedish. And we're here to cook a well, we're here to buy ingredients to cook a Swedish, I don't, I wouldn't say classic, a Swedish classic, Korv Stroganoff. Um, why am I making cooking videos? You might be wondering. Well, you guys have asked for it, and we've spent a lot of food talk during the stream, so I figured let's get that going as a regular thing on the channel. So today we're simple here pick up some ingredients and we'll show you what we buy and try to explain what it is and maybe if you guys can get it somewhere to make the dish yourself. And again, shout out to uh, City Girls for allowing us to film a little bit in here. And as you can see, they have some high-tech stuff here. You just blip the food and uh, go and pay for it. So let's go. All right, let's see. We need some parsley just to make it look pretty. Uh, well, okay, let's get some onions while we're here. Simple yellow onion, nothing complicated, available everywhere. And then you gotta do some high-tech stuff, weigh it. Out comes the price, and then you just flip it, whopping 264. Swedish crowns, which is like 30 cents or something. <laughs> uh, am I blind? <laughs> oh, it's in here. Yeah, yeah, it's in here. Okay. Um, looks a bit. That was better. Why are they looking? Oh, that's good enough. I don't know why, they, they all look the same. Uh, so, parsley isn't really mandatory, it's just to look it pretty, you know? You need, I need a good thumbnail for this video, so it has to be some green in it. Yeah. So is, it, is the aesthetic important for you when you're cooking usually, or? Not usually, only today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we need cream. You can get the cooking cream, but I like the fatty, normal whipped cream, it's better. Um, here we go. Eco, eco ecological, is that what it's called? Ecolo ecological. Is yeah. that, yeah, yeah, that's the right word, okay. Never, never forget to blip these, because if you do and you get a control, I actually don't know what happens, because it's never happened to me, but they probably won't be happy. Uh, so the final thing, and the most important thing we need, it's the fowl core, the core of the whole dish. Right, so there's gonna be a few more ingredients we need for the recipe, but uh, we already have those at home. So I'll go through all the ingredients before we start cooking. But the final one we need right now is fowl core, the classic Swedish sausage, uh, which you have a lot of right here. And Do you think they have uh, fowl core in, in other countries as well, or similar I, sausages? I'm not sure, maybe at IKEA. IKEA could have it, but I honestly have never seen it in another country. So use any sausage to get a a decent similar. replication, similar experience, but it won't be the same. You need a classic Swedish fall decor for the real experience. Um, so let's get... Uh, yeah, this one will do. Fall decor, even the, a little bit finer one, deadly, with a little bit more meat in it compared to that. There's cheaper versions, but get one that's a little bit more fine. At least if you're doing it for the first time. Um, but that should be all the ingredients we need right here, plus a couple of uh, extra things we just bought for other reasons uh, and other dishes but um, we will see you when we get back home and then we'll go over all the ingredients that you need so don't go shopping just yet if you're watching a video and planning to make this at home all right <laughs> time to head back make the food uh, we couldn't film in the, the cashier area or whatever it's called so but basically you just whip your card pay instantly and every maybe every tenth time you get a check and if you haven't blipped all the products or whatever uh, I guess you get into trouble but I'm not sure what happens get into jail. <laughs> yeah get into jail instantly if you miss one package of milk jail instantly 10 years all right so we're now back in the kitchen here and first of all I just wanted to go through the ingredients quickly since we already had like half at home of course this is the main thing the uh, 
poly core. Uh, this is like, well, the most important thing. You can probably use other sausages as we mentioned, but if you want the full experience, try to get this, Google for it. I'm sure it's possible at least in the US to get it. Um, and then the cream, of course, that we mentioned in the store. Uh, one yellow onion, we're, we're gonna use half that sausage, we're just gonna make two, two portions, so one small onion is fine. And this is something we already had at home, Dijon mustard. Just as a little Dijon? bit of Dijon, 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 I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> mustard basically, a little dollop of that just for a little bit of flavor. There's a lot of ways you can, you can uh, flavor Ex experiment. it. Experiment. Experiment, exactly, yeah. experiment with it. Um, but this is kind of like the base version we're doing. Um, I've done, we've done like a thousand different versions before, but this is the base version. And then tomato puree, I guess it's cool. Yeah, I think tomato so. Tomato puree, um, salt and pepper, pepper. Um, parsley, of course, that I mentioned, and some rice is what you usually serve it to. I don't know, I've, I've never had it. Rice is the standard thing, right? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. Start cooking the rice, because that takes like 20 minutes, and then we'll start chopping the rest up. Um, so let's get started. All right, so here's two deciliters of rice. It looks very little, but if you cook rice, you know it swells up a lot. So this is our high-tech rice cooker, rice boiler, or whatever you call it. You just dump the rice in there, then you put twice as much water, um, and then you put on, that's all you gotta do. So let's get some water going, dump that in there, put on the lid, Turn it on, boom. Don't you have to rinse the rice before you put it in? No, not this one. We Some rice you need to rinse, but we bought specifically rice that you don't have to rinse, so... Because we're lazy, okay? <laughs> That's don't judge us. Don't judge us. That's the only reason. We're lazy, it tastes just as good as far as I know, so... Why buy rice that you have to rinse when you can just buy pre-rinsed rice or whatever it is? I'm not sure. It's nice. Alright, so next step. Let's start chopping the sausage and onion. I'm gonna start with the sausage, just because, oops. Uh, whatever. Uh, and our very fine Global Knives. I'm not sponsored by them, but if you're interested in Global, please contact us. Um, so, let's just go straight through half the sausage, the harder half. We'll put in the fridge or something later. Let's put it over there. <laughs> So these, this is actually pretty good to eat raw. I mean, not good as in I'm just gonna eat a whole sausage, but it's not, uh, it's already cooked kind of, so you don't need to worry about it being raw or something like that. You can chop it any way you want. The usual way is to have kind of strips, I would say. Uh, so I'm just gonna, it's always a little bit tricky because as you can see, they're not straight, these sausages, so they always become a little bit crooked when you try to slice them, but Something like this, and then just do that. I thought this might be a little bit too little sausage, but we'll see. It's like 150 grams, or a little bit more per person, which is usually good. And after this we have the onion, and I'm sure if you watch a lot of cooking videos, or if you just watch a few, you know that there's a million different tutorials on how to slice onion, and my way is the best way. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not a chef. Don't take my word for anything. Okay, I'm just an amateur cook who likes to watch a lot of YouTube videos. But I don't know. Slicing onion has... It's... I don't know. I feel like I always see discussions about how are you supposed to slice onion? What's the best way? Even the chefs are competing and just do it however you want it really. As long as you're comfortable. And, and one thing you'll notice that I'm sure some of you will complain about now that I'm cutting the onion is they always tell, oh, use your knuckles and do like this so you can't cut your knuckles. I never use my knuckles and I've never sliced myself. So, sure, that might be the tip that every single chef will give you. But I think, I feel like using the knuckles, I'll, I'll show you when I get to the onion now, okay? So, there's the sausage done. Now let's do the onion. Uh, let's try it a little bit slower this time. So, I will start off by cutting that off. Then, splitting it in half. And then just just take all the what's this even called shell? No, that's uh, 
peel off the peel off the onion. Peel off the onion. Yeah. Let's hope I don't start crying though. That 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 would probably happen. But uh, so let's just start off by clearing out all of this out. Uh, yeah. So the way I do it, I think it's just kind of like the stuff standard way. Just slice through like this fairly thinly, and that's why you keep the root 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 on. Uh, so that it keeps together and then just slice through like this and if you want it to be a little bit more fine you can do, take do one slice through like this and I know there's gonna be complaints oh my god you're cutting towards your hand or whatever or you're not doing like this now I've never cut myself doing this okay so it should be fine this is how the chefs do it they put your knuckle something like this I think it's incredibly uncomfortable, so I just put my fingers like this and trust that I don't cut them, okay? <laughs> the, don't, okay, maybe not the best tip, but uh, that's the way I do it. And now you get finely chopped onion. And this is another important thing. If you have a sharp knife, you have a lot less of a risk to cut yourself. Because if you have a, a dull knife here, it might slide down and then you will cut your fingers. But if you have a very sharp knife, it will just go straight through like butter like that. And now we're left with this. And we'll have perfectly sliced onion. Um, so let's do the same thing for the other half. And there we go. Sliced, no cut fingers, look, fine. <laughs> so... Have you had any kitchen accidents? Um, I don't know. No, I, I haven't... Not in terms of... I've never cut myself, I think, actually. Which is the kind of the normal accident, I guess, but... I don't know if you were, you had an accident in the kitchen. <laughs> Let's take it another time. Right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's take that another time. So I'm gonna turn on this thing because this stove is absolute bad. <laughs> uh, it takes so long to get hot. So we're gonna have to do like a time lapse or something right now because uh, this is gonna take like five minutes. I should have turned this on before I started cutting. Noob mistake. Right, pan should be hot now. So we're doing about 50% butter and 50% oil. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty hot. I waited long enough. Um, I might have taken a little bit too much oil, but that's fine. As you probably have heard, when the butter is silenced, it's time to put the stuff in. Can you use any other ingredients than the sausage for the? Oh yeah, there, there's a. Uh, I think beef stroganoff is a more like quite famous dish, even outside Sweden. Um, I don't know if it's made exactly the same way. I've never made beef stroganoff, but you might recognize that. Maybe it's from France or someone's gonna be mad now, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, beef stroganoff is more common. This is the Swedish version, which is more common here. Korv, korv stroganoff. Let's see if I can do some of those uh, chef clips. Oh shit. <laughs> Okay, let's not do that. Okay. There you go. Yeah, but I, you, that's why you don't do that. Now we've got freaking butter on the stove that's gonna get burned in there. I need to practice a bit, okay? Okay, let's not. <laughs> You're gonna throw it at me soon. Okay, let's not do that. It's easy to keep the stuff in the pan, but it's the freaking oil and butter that splashes all over the place. I'm not sure. I need, I need to practice that a bit more. Let's put the onions in as well. Right, so just let this uh, fry for a couple of minutes to get some color on the sausage and uh, then you can start putting the rest of the stuff in. And something I gotta mention is I'm not really using any specific measurements. I'm kind of, uh, I don't know, guessing isn't the right word, but 
Höfta. Hip, yeah. hip, hippie. That's a, that's, a, that's a Swedish saying. I don't know. I'll try to put some specifics in the description below if you're interested. Uh, I'll just copy some other recipe, but when you've done it a lot of times, it's easier to just kind of estimate how much you need and then taste it, of course. Yeah, and it's, uh, some people like other, like uh, more taste, or some people like more mild flavor, so it's yeah, to you too. Th that's a good point. I think a lot of recipes, at least in Sweden, always are so weak with the spices and flavors. Like you can always double it sometimes and it still tastes better. Um, I think we can put in the tomato puree now. Again, I think you're supposed to use one tablespoon roughly, but that's usually too little, so I'm just gonna hefta this. <laughs> Easiest thing is just test it out, taste it basically, and then put more in if you need it. All right, and as always, salt and pepper. pepper. The, the fall liqueur can actually be a little bit salty already, so I'm not gonna take too much salt. Um, there's always a lot, well, you can put salt in afterwards, but you can't remove salt, so it's better to be, don't have too much salt. But pepper, just take as much as you want. And now I think we can start putting in, let's put the cream in. And that's when uh, it will start to actually look good, because now it doesn't look that good. Alright, so not a full one, because, yeah, we're not doing four portions like we usually do, so... Yeah, I'll put, again, I'll put the specifics in the description, roughly, <laughs> uh, if you want to do it yourself. This will transform into something beautiful within a couple of minutes, because now it still doesn't look very good. And let's put a little bit of... Uh, Dijon, however you say, Dijon mustard in there. Just a little bit, something like this. It can take, it can overtake the flavor if you take too much. So just take a little bit. Just let it simmer for a few minutes, uh, and it will turn more orange uh, soon. And that is basically done. And the rice should be done too. Uh, it should be done soon as well. All right, the rice is done. Tada! That's how hard it was. But uh, it will keep warm until we need it. The corn stroganoff still needs one or two more minutes before it's done. But now it's starting to turn it into the right color. But I think maybe some more tomato. Or no, it's actually quite orange. But the color is usually a good way to just see if you've had enough tomato puree in it or not. Um, but I'll give it a taste in a second instead, so let's get a spoon. Right, let's do a quick taste test. Uh, I'm just gonna try the sauce, because again, the sausage is... You can't undercook the sausage, so it will be fine. Ouch. Perfect. Tastes just like it's supposed to. Um, How would you describe the taste? Mm. <laughs> creamy, creamy with a bit of tomato, a little bit of sweetness from the onion, of course. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. The salt, the kind of salt the sausage makes it better. Now I just try the sauce, obviously. But uh, I think we can turn it off now. And we should be ready to plate. Alright, course Roganoff is done, rice is done, let's plate it up. Freshly cooked rice. The problem with this rice cooker is that it's always like a crispy layer in the bottom, so you kind of need to uh, not scrape up the bottom basically. Something like that should be good, that's about half of it. And so I'm just gonna plate one plate here. No reason to you, reason for you. To, I've, saw, I've seen a lot of cooking videos. They always just plate one, okay? Most of the time. <laughs> and then... Do I put it on, on it or on the side? Put it on, on it. Half. Half yeah, like half. this. Half, okay. Yeah, we don't usually care about how good it looks, so... Yeah, we'll, we'll see. It looks like it's... Yeah. It's fine. It's the taste that's important, okay? It looks kind of weird, but it's fine. It 
think that's about half. Yeah, this this portion is maybe in the little smaller. It could be a little bit bigger, I'd say. But this is lunch, so lunch is usually smaller, obviously. And uh, just to make it a little bit more better for the thumbnail, a little bit of parsley. That was really, I don't know. There you go. Korv stroganoff, Swedish speciali speciality. Or no, classic, Swedish classic, I don't know. That's how it looks. Beautiful. Awesome. And so yeah, if you guys enjoyed this very different video, and one of the first episodes of, uh, of the Battlefront, this might actually be the first. I don't know when I'm recording it. <laughs> but uh, let us know what did you think, anything to improve, and what else do you want to see us make? Other food dishes? What else can we do? The, uh, uh, the opportunities are uh, endless. endless, I guess I could say. I'll, I'll, this series can be for anything you guys want me to do. Um, I like cooking. You guys seem to be interested in the stream, so I thought why not take it into video format. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching, and as always, may the force be with you. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean though, that was disgusting. <laughs> You're turning red. <laughs> Do I need to eat that? Yeah.